Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. I'm Christy Scheib and this morning we're visiting with Kristen Hildebrand. She's Warren County's Extension Agent for Horticulture. And today you are going to talk to us about some activities that will help encourage new foods to children. Yeah, so we, we talked about the Eating Over the Rainbow Challenge and you know, sometimes even for adults, you know, kids especially, but for adults too, sometimes you know, if we grow our own food at home, we're encouraged to actually eat the, the produce that we're growing. And so right now for the month of September is a good time to grow your own kale. And there's a lot of different options for growing kale. I know that a lot of times, you know, people have a conventional garden space where they actually grow kale in the ground. Uh, you can certainly do it that way if that, you know, fits what works for you. Another option that can be really good, especially if you want to involve the kiddos, is to grow it in a container. And you know, for the cooler weather months of Kentucky for the gardening season, kale is just a, a good crop to grow. It likes those cooler air conditions. It's also a really good superfood for us because it carries a lot of nutritional information. It's gonna supply vitamin A, vitamin C, iron, and also absorbic acid. And it's also really good for our heart as well. It can help fight off cancers and things. So it's really a good superfood to have have, and it's fairly simple to grow. You know, like if we're talking about tomatoes or peppers, they have to have six to eight hours of sunlight, but for kale, it only requires like two to four hours of sunlight. So more partial shade type conditions. And again, um, if you get a smaller transplant right now, which we were able to pick up some transplants available at Mammoth Cave Transplants. And so we were able to situate that into a container. And you know, as far as containers go, basically, you know, you have a ready-made garden for you right really fast. You don't have to have a tiller to do that, you know, so if you don't have a lot of resources, and it really does make it more efficient for your space. So if you are gardening on your patio or your deck, uh, the kids can get out there and observe, you know, the, the actual food being grown. And more than likely when they see it being grown, they're gonna consume it. And you know, with the, our, you know, challenge that we had for the eating over the rainbow, there's other kind of activities you can kind of go into as well. You can kind of read a book, maybe you could check out the library to see if they have some information on growing kale. You can also do um, setting a theme for the week to make it extra fun. Um, so maybe you can do something about growing greens and kind of maybe switch it up, not just with kale, but do some other things too. So if you make it fun, you make it something that they also can do. Um, and really the fun part is whenever you're able to harvest the kale and then you can make whatever type of recipe you want to. Involve them in the kitchen. I know we said there's more age appropriate activities for them to do if they're two or three or four, but the more exposure to those things, the more likely that they're gonna be able to consume those healthier options for you know any type of food. Definitely, and gardening provides so many other benefits, Kristen. It engages the senses. They can get their hands dirty when putting their hands in the dirt. They can talk about the different responsibility that it takes to care for their kale. Now, Kristen, how uh, can we get more information on growing our kale? Yes, so we have a great resource that's available through our uh, University of Kentucky. It's a NEP resource. Um, it's actually called 226 is the number, but it's growing your own kale. It's a beginner's guide. So it kind of is really good for walking you through what varieties of kale are out there. There's some smooth, there's some, you know, kind of ruffled edges. It just, there's different colors. There's more blue, or you can have one that are more green. So there's just a lot of options there on varieties that do well. And then you can learn a little bit more about harvesting, also pests and diseases, how far apart for spacing. And so if you're growing in containers, we do want to recommend that you have a good container that's big enough to support the kale. Also make sure you have good drainage holes in the bottom of it. And just making sure that you have a really good potting soil mixture to use. But that is a great resource that kind of walks you through how to grow kale on your own. So if you'd like to get your hands on that resource, please give us a call here or even at your local extension office too.
And once they're done harvesting their kale, then it's time to get in the kitchen. And Kristen, we have so many recipes available that use kale. Um, where can we access those? Yeah, so there's that plan to eat moo that's also available uh, with our Eating Over the Rainbow Challenge, that QR code. So if you want to check that out, or you can just give us a call here and we can put those in your hands too. All righty, Kristen, thanks so much for being with us today. If you would like more information on growing your own kale, be sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for joining us today on the Farm and Home Show and we'll see you next time.